hey guys and welcome to my channel a princess in progress this week we're going to be doing things a little bit differently you see usually each week i have a movie that we're going to talk about but this week i have something on my heart that i want to talk to you about and it has to do with your mind you see i'm sure you've heard this just like me that the mind is a battlefield but maybe you don't know why it's a battlefield or maybe you do either way the mind is a battlefield because there is good and evil in the world and our mind is wait, raging or way is it waging yeah waging between good and evil how do i know this and why is this true well you see we are created in the image of god but we are also created in the image of adam and eve which means that when they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, we also benefited from that fruit, right? We have the ability to be aware that there is evil in the world, to think about evil, and we have the ability to be aware of goodness and to think about goodness. Now, why is this important to recognize? Well, there are three reasons. One is that, excuse me, God, he has a voice in our minds. Two, Satan has a voice and agenda about what we think and believe. And three, we have a voice and agenda about what we think, believe, and do. Not only are these three things important, but also the most important fact is that what we think is what we do. What I mean is that your experiences your thoughts, they turn into behavior. They turn into how you see people and how you see the world. Not only that, they turn into what you believe about people and what you believe about the world. So it is important to know how to renew your mind. You see, in the Bible, there are so many different examples of this. I, I can't remember, I think it's in Philippians, but he, the author is talking about how we need to renew our minds by thinking on things from above. Whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is lovely. Another example is that God tells us to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. It also says that he who is looking for peace will find it when they fix their mind on God. You see, not only does that tell us what to do, when we're trying to find a life, when we're trying to choose good, but it also tells us, um, it also tells us what to think, right? And it tells us why it's important and that we have a choice in the matter. It is so interesting that once we recognize that we have control and the ability to control our minds, it's so interesting to me what changes, right? And really the biggest thing that changes is your confidence because you recognize I can't, I don't have to think this. I don't have to believe this. Instead, I can be transformed and choose something else to think about, right? That's where these three voices come in and are handy and important to know about because you, your voice is going to sound like you. What do I want for breakfast? Do I want to do this? Sometimes it can sound evil. Sometimes it can sound good, right? The other thing to recognize is that Satan's voice is always going to sound evil. Not only that, it says that Satan is seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's the father of lies. His native tongue, his language is lies. Lastly, we know that God speaks life. He's come to give life and give it abundantly. He says that he has a future for us, a future of good. He thinks good thoughts towards us. He is love. His character is love, right? And so what we can glean from these two things is that we're in the middle. The enemy's over here and God's over here. And they're all going to whisper at us. They're all going to be mumbled and jumbled in there. But what you and I have to recognize is that we have to take captive every thought 
and hold it to the truth of the word of God. Why? Because the, the thoughts that you plant become what you believe. They become what you believe. They become how you act, right? So your character growing good fruits happens by taking every thought captive. This takes practice. It's not easy. I will admit that. So don't think that. It's not hopeless. It's not helpless. You aren't helpless, okay? But the other thing to notice and recognize, okay, is that God has good thoughts for you. If he is trying to speak life into you, right, through conviction, through hope, through all of these things, then what he is pointing to is he is pointing out how to grow and how to live life abundantly. So that means that you have the answer right there of which voice you should be listening to, which thoughts you should be letting be planted in your mind to believe as truth. Now, I'm sure you have asked this question, or maybe you haven't yet, but the question that I has, had asked a long time ago was what is truth? And how do we know the Bible really is truth? Well, one thing, God promises us that he never can contradicts himself. That means that nothing in the Bible that we see or read contradicts his character or contradicts what he has already spoken. Another thing to point out is that God never changes. He says he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The reason that this can be held as absolute and abundant truth is because God has, he has no, I don't know, he has no, um, he's not going to gain from your life, okay? You're going to gain from his life. That's how we can know it's truth. You know, people oftentimes will try to do things that will gain their in their life, right? That they can gain from. God's not giving us any tools where he can gain from them because he doesn't need us. He created us because he wants us. So if you're questioning whether or not this stuff that I'm speaking is truth, recognize that God hasn't changed or ever contradicted himself. Not only that, because you know what goodness is means that there is an absolute standard for goodness. It means we have a good God that gave us that standard, right? Not only that, you know what darkness is, right? So if the Bible lays out what and why it happened and it never can contradicts itself, it never points out things that allow humans to gain from it. In fact, it asks us to sacrifice our own lives and God never changes then we can have confidence that this is the truth that God speaks over us. So just rest and know that God is speaking truth. Lastly, what I want to point out is that you do have control over this, okay? You have control over what you think. So here is how you can um, practically put this into practice, I guess, practically practice. (laughs) And that is by taking every thought captive. What I mean is that when you have a thought that doesn't feel like your own, when you look at, when you think, I'm worthless, I should just end my life, right? That's probably not your thought. How do I know this? Because I've been there. But I also know this because That thought is so dark that you probably wouldn't have gotten there yourself without an idea first. So what I want to say is that when you have that thought, you hold it, you say, well, let's put a pin in it. Is this truth? Am I worthless? Then what you can do is you can go to the Bible, or if you have scripture hidden in your heart that you've memorized, you can bring it up and you can say, is this what God says about me? Is this what truth says about me? If not, it is a thought that needs to be unplanted. It needs to be let go. Okay? This takes practice, friends. And it takes practical practice. I don't care what thought you have. 
I don't care how many times you've had that thought. I don't care if it takes five seconds. If it happens every five seconds and it takes you five minutes to figure it out or five years or five decades or five days, I don't care. What I care about and what God cares about is that you're trying. You are practically putting into practice his word and believing that you can benefit from it. Believing that you can know his truth, you can walk in his truth, and you can grow his truth to live life and live it abundantly. You see, you and I are vessels of Christ. We are called to be the difference. That means that we have to know what the difference is. That means that you have to be putting on the helmet of salvation, you have to be seeking God daily, and you have to be reading his word and hiding it in your heart to memorize it so that when the thoughts, when the darkness comes, when it starts to, um, when it feels like that battle is going to be lost, you already have all of the weapons and attire to fight and to win because through God, all things are possible. You will not lose because God already won. Jesus already won. So what I want to leave you with today is that your mind is a battlefield and it, it is raging with goodness and darkness. You have to recognize that there are three different voices in your head, but only one of them is speaking truth and hope and life over you. In order to have a life and to share that life of Jesus with others, you have to be growing it in your mind to live it to believe it, to breathe it, so that other people can see it. They can see the light and life in you. Your mind is where this begins. It is who you are and who you become. It is what you have experienced, what you believe, what you read, what you allow to um, be planted as truth. And lastly, what I want to say is that God loves you. And he sees the battle. He sees the thoughts that you're fighting off. He's not sitting there condemning you. In fact, his conviction when it comes, when it tells us that we're sitting in sin, it will come with hope. You won't be sitting there saying, I am shame. I am sinful. Instead, you'll say, I have sinned. And I'm going to go to God. And I'm going to get it forgiven. And I'm going to move on. So just recognize that God is not condemning you. He may be convicting you, but he's not condemning you. He's not sitting there judging you. In fact, God forgives and forgets. So just remember that he loves you so much. He's waiting for you to find the hope and the freedom of having a renewed mind. Your mind is a battlefield, friends, and it's time to pick up your armor, pick up your sword, and fight and be aware of the battle that's going on. I love you guys so much. I will see you next week. Don't forget to hit subscribe or hit the notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. Also comment below things that you found interesting or uh, things you would like to see on the next video. I would greatly appreciate it if you would share this video with someone and if you would give it a like or a thumbs up. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next week. Bye.